My name is Mick Kong. I live in Helsinki, which is in Finland, which is in Europe. In 1991, when I was a 21 year old student, I joined a small startup as a programmer. Pretty quickly, I was reassigned from my programming duties to start to do reverse engineering with this new problem of computer viruses. MS-DOS viruses infecting IBM PCs and compatibles spreading around the world on floppy disks. And for the younger people in the audience, this is a floppy disk. <laughs> This is what USB thumb drives used to look like in the 1990s. <laughs> so I started analyzing viruses and I collected every single virus in the world. Around 150 viruses at the time. I had a box, this box right here, with 150 floppies, one virus on each floppy. And I reverse engineered every single one of them. So I had full expertise of the whole problem scenario, which would be very hard to do nowadays with millions and millions of malware we have today. But of course the problem was very, very different. These viruses we were fighting in the late 1980s, early 1990s were written by teenage boys and they would basically play pranks with the users. They would infect your computer, then after five days or after you've rebooted the computer a hundred times or on specific dates, it would show you something. A message, an animation, it might play some music or randomly when you would try to run a program you get a guy walking across your screen instead. So basically pranks, written by teenage boys. These boys were not benefiting in any way from these viruses they were writing. They made no money, they had no message, they didn't become famous. The problem was very, very different from where we are today. But it was a problem. Despite the fact that these viruses were more like pranks, many of them were destructive. These were infecting corporate networks causing very serious problems, so companies needed solutions. And we started building solutions. This is our antivirus program from 1993, which we built together with a company from Iceland. And we're selling worldwide an MS-DOS antivirus program to detect and disinfect viruses spreading on floppy disks, or maybe viruses infecting program files that you could share on BBS systems. Internet, as we know it today, didn't yet exist. The web had not been invented yet, or it wasn't in mainstream use. And uh, obviously the platforms were very different and spreading speeds of viruses and malware were totally different from today. Among the viruses I analyzed early in my career was brain which was already before my time. This is from 1986. I started in 1991. However, when Brain turned 25 in 2011, we had a meeting at the company and, uh, talking about how we should do something. The first PC virus turns 25. We should do something. And I floated the idea that, what do you think if I try to go and find the guys who wrote the first PC virus. And the reason why I floated the idea was that I remembered when I had analyzed Brain in the beginning of my career, there was a hidden message inside the boot sector of every infected floppy infected by Brain. It never shows the message, but if you look at the boot sector, you'll find this text saying 730 Nissan Block Alamaik Baltown Lahore. And then two names, Basit and Amjad. This is an address. So I took a camera guy with me and went to Lahore. This is me walking down the street of Nizam Block, Alama Iqbal Town, finding number 730 and then knocking on the door. <laughs> Who opens the door? 
Pasit and Amjad. 25 years later, they were still there. And we had a really interesting discussion about why they wrote the Brain A virus in 1986 and how do they feel about it today. If you're interested in PC virus history, you'll find the full video from YouTube. And I don't have my original Brain.A floppy anymore. The original floppy that I analyzed in the beginning of my career. I don't have it because I gave it to Basit and Amjad. Thank you very much for this interview. And I actually, I brought Brain with me. I, I brought it home. It's for you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Now today, we don't fight viruses anymore. Viruses are no longer a thing. Yes, we do have malware, but we almost never nowadays find malware which would spread automatically. We don't find parasitic viruses or boot sector viruses or email worms or network worms. Today's attacks are quite different, like ransomware. Ransomware almost never replicates further. There's some exceptions, but typically a company gets hacked, and then they manu the attackers manually do lateral movement and find servers and workstations and push the malware on these machines. It doesn't replicate automatically. And the reason why this has changed is that today the attackers want to make money. And if you want to make money, you don't want to create outbreaks of malware which get out of control and end up infecting millions of computers, bringing the case to front page news. If you want to make money with malware and you're on the front page of CNN.com, you failed. Like, you don't want publicity. And many of these early viruses became massively large outbreaks, much, much bigger outbreaks than what the creators thought. So in May 2000, we were the first company in the world to receive a sample of I Love You. I Love You, which went on to become the single largest email worm outbreak in history. You would receive this email worm through an email from someone you know. And the email would be titled, I Love You. And the attachment in the email was titled loveletterforyou.txt.vbs. VBS, Visual Basic Script. So if you click on the attachment, now you just executed the attachment, and now you will send the same email to everybody in your address book as you. So you will send a love letter to your neighbors, to your workmates, to your boss, and they will click on it and it will spread further. I remember this case very well. We received the first sample in the morning, 9.41. We spent the next 48 hours trying to fight the outbreak and ultimately failing because the virus went on to infect 200 million computers around the world. And today at our offices in Helsinki, we actually remember this outbreak with an art piece. We opened up an art museum last September, the Museum of Malware Art, filled with modern art inspired by malware, and viruses, and uh, cyber attacks. And this is an art piece called Click for Love, created by Kasper Hilden and Hugo Lampinen, made out of computer mouses painted pink to create a heart, because of course you used your mouse to click on the attachment, the love letter. But not all of these Viruses were spreading over email. Around the same time, we started finding network worms. Worms like Blaster, Slammer, Sasser, Nimda. Blaster would infect Windows computers by scanning IP addresses to find open ports. I was looking for port 135 TCP, the RPC port. And this is 2003, so most users would be running Windows XP. The latest version of Windows XP at the time was Windows XP Service Pack 1. 
Windows XP Service Pack 1 had a firewall.